Grizzlies fans, welcome into another Grizz Game Day update. The Grizzlies are taking on the LA Clippers tonight. Joining me for the first time this season, this is the only team that the Grizzlies have not played this season. So joining me from LA is my good friend, Tomer. Welcome onto the show. How are you? What's up? Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is uh, March 5th. First time you're playing a team in your own conference. Yeah. Um, late, but we'll take it. We'll take it. Should be Crazy. Fun month. I think they play three times this month. Yeah, this is the first of three matchups this very month. The Clippers are in town at the end, like the very end of the month for like a, not a back-to-back, but like a little mini series. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's get to the game. Um, the Clippers are coming off five straight losses. The Grizzlies will be without three of their starters and John Morant, Dylan Brooks, and Steven Adams. Brandon Clark is also out, probably out for right. the rest of the season. Kawhi is in. Zubak is day-to-day for the Clippers. No Norm Powell. So the Grizzlies have only played one game, Tomer, without Ja and Dylan. It was a loss to the Raptors where Dez and Jaron obviously stepped up on the offense, had 17 shot attempts each. The Grizzlies are also four and five without Jaw this year. So not like the best stat line like they had last year without Jaw. Um, right. Let's go. JJ and Dez, what do you expect from them tonight? Jaron Jackson and, and Desmond Bain? Jaron Jackson always kills the Clippers. Um, I mean, I think last year when they played a home game here without Dylan Brooks and John Morant, I believe Jaron Jackson had a game winner or a game, uh, the dagger, I, I want to say. So uh, he always plays well. Um, defensive player of the year candidate. So he's been really good all season long. Really been impressed with him. Um, Desmond Bain, uh, I feel like he's he'll be able to carry the load, I think, without some of those guys. Um, I think Tyus Jones is a guy who's been um, – very, very solid. He's always a good assist to turnover ratio kind of guy. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And I think um, while the Clippers do struggle with faster guards, so it's kind of to their benefit that John Morant's now playing, Tyus is no joke. He's pretty good himself. So uh, with Desmond Bain there, John Morant, uh, uh, Jaron Jackson, Tyus Jones, like they still have a lot of weapons. I'm not, it's not going to be an easy game by any means for the Clippers at all. So it's actually crazy that you said that because it like flashed something, a memory into me. When I did my podcast with Jaron, I asked him, what team he thought he scored the most points over over his career and he was like I don't know and I was like okay it's actually your hometown team in Indiana and he was like oh I actually thought it would have been the Clippers so what is it about Jaron and the Clippers is it okay so we were just talking Zubak is day-to-day so if he's out let's just say because it was swelling in his knee you said if he's out they have Mason Plumlee as their only true five and then who guards Jaron yeah so I well, Zu, I think it's like swelling in his calf I believe is what it is. But yeah. like if they're starting Mason Plumley and Zubas can't go, uh, they gotta go small. They either go with like Marcus Morris at the five, Robert Covington at the five, um, or Nicholas Patum at the five. So Steven Adams has always killed him on the offensive glass. And so with him out, I'm guessing like the Grizzlies are playing more with Jackson, um, Jaron Jackson at the five. And those kind of space out offenses always give the Clippers some trouble uh when you gotta bring the five out. Um, so much more spacing on the court there. Jaron Jackson is one of those guys who, uh, honestly, from my perspective, can go like one of five from three or like five of five from three. He's just he's just that kind of guy who can just get hot, and um, that's what we've seen against the Clippers. It just that's how uh, it ends up happening um, when he plays the Clippers for some reason. But uh, no, I mean he's a really good, really talented player. So um, Clippers really got to be on the lookout for him on both ends of the floor because he can cause some havoc, you know, even though they're shorthanded. Uh, the Clippers are 23rd overall in points, like sp- points per game. The Grizzlies have the number one overall defensive rating right now. However, the Clippers now have, this is of course, after the, the trade deadline, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook. Does that change the way the Clippers are scoring or the amount they're scoring with the, the star power there? Yeah. So, I mean, right now, post all-star, post all-star break, the Clippers are 0 and 5. They have 112. Uh, point eight offensive rating and 120 defensive rating. So they're getting, they have a negative Nate rating since the all-star break. Um, pretty bad. I think on the season, they're at about um, even uh, net rating wise. So um, they struggled out of the all-star break. I, I, It's tough because Westbrook is to blame in some ways, but also not to blame because he's done pretty much everything they've asked of him. Mm-hmm. Um, come in, set the tone, um, try to be a low turnover guy, not take bad shots, mid-range shots. So he's, do, he's done a pretty good job of that. Only take catch and shoot threes. However, him coming in and starting and playing 30 minutes a night has thrown Terrence Mann's role in flux, Norman Powell's role in flux, uh, Eric Gordon. Um, I would even say Paul and Kawhi have had to adjust their games Eric a little Gordon bit. So 
Yeah. Now. yeah. So like everyone's world's kind of had to shift and it's taken some time to adjust to that. So, um, you know, they may be 0-5, but they lost a one-point game to the Kings in double overtime when they were up three, should have fouled. Um, they lost an overtime game to the Nuggets where they were probably a rebound away from probably securing that game. The other night against the Kings, they were up one, uh, again, late before DeMontis to bonus two free throws. They, they could be three and two in this stretch. So, um, sometimes that's, that's how the cookie crumbles, you know, it's just, it's just the luck of the bounce. But, um, I think Russell Westbrook has, has brought a weapon that they didn't have before and his speed, his athleticism, um, his, his, his downhill attack has been really good for them. But the only thing I would say is it's, it's just, it's taken some time for some of the guys to figure out where they're best with some of the new rotations that they're going with. And, and Ty is, you know, Ty Lue has tried to play Marcus Morris. Um, we saw Robert Covington play for the first time in, I think, like a month um, the, the other night. So um, it's tough with like 16 games left, but there's still a lot of experimenting to be done. I, I can't tell you like there's a set rotation right now. They're still trying to figure everything out. So uh, while they've looked good uh, at times, they've, they've struggled defensively. And I think a, a bit of that is, again, Russell Westbrook's fault, but again, not really his fault. It's just he's done everything they've asked of him, but it's thrown a lot of the rotations and stuff in flux. So I think they'll figure it out. It'll just take some time. Well, there's also something to be said about home versus away, and, and people argue this all the time, but they're starting a five-game homestand. The Grizzlies have the right. second best home record, haven't done quite as well on the road. So there is something to be said maybe about that. But my last question for you, actually – Two more questions. Luke Kennard, homecoming. You guys excited? Oh yeah, yeah. That should be uh, that should be fun. Uh, I can't believe um, the Grizzlies got a shooter like Luke. He's honestly uh, he's he's been so fun to cover. I think I covered him for the last uh, three years. Did he was here? Yeah, he was here three years. Uh, fantastic dude. Honestly, just always willing to talk. Really fun guy. Uh, keeps it light. Um, so I, I'm excited to see him back, excited to to get to talk to him again and, you know, dab him up and just see how everything's been. Uh, I really feel bad because he – there was a road trip here in the Clippers where I think they were gone in December for like four games or something. And his wife um, redesigned their entire garage with like Luke Kennard Clippers like on the entire wall. You, you can see it. I, I can send it to you. It's, it was really nice, really nicely done. I think it was like three or four days it took to complete. It was very beautiful. She surprised him. And then two months later he was traded and I was like, oh. That's that's rough. That's rough. Um, but no, excited to see Luke back. I'm, I'm expecting a nice little video. I'm expecting a nice ovation for him. Uh, again, I, I can't believe the Grizzlies got a shooter like him. Uh, I think last year's league bet, league 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 leader in shooting. This year, I believe he's like third or fourth, if not if I'm not mistaken. But great guy, great guy. Happy for him. Happy for the Grizzlies. Um, a little jealous, but yeah, uh, n- nothing, nothing but good things to say. Yeah, I think him and Des are both top five in three point percentage, which is good. If he shoots, that's just, if he shoots and Luke knows this, Luke, if he just shoots the ball, he's so deadly. I think he just likes to get like the most high percentage of looks is, is what is what it's kind of caused him some trouble here with the Clippers. He, he really just took the high percentage. With it. If he just shoots, he's lights out. My very last question for you real quick. Um, give me one single one-on-one matchup that you're looking forward to tonight. One single one-on-one matchup that I'm looking forward to tonight. Um, I guess because because both teams have um, changes at the guard for, for this game, I would say um, this is expected to be, you know, John Rand versus Russell Westbrook. Uh, about a week ago, it wasn't even Russell Westbrook. So a week and a half ago. So, I would say Russell Westbrook versus Ty. I'm assuming Ty Jones is going to start. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to Russell Westbrook versus Ty Jones. Um, you know, someone who's very low mistake, very um, you know high, high percentage shooter in, in Ty Jones, and a guy in Russell Westbrook who can be a little out, out of control at times, uh, but a guy who can really change the game with his pace and, and, and his rhythm and his and his kicking out to teammates and that, and that kind of thing. Um, that can really change the game for the Clippers. So. I would, I would say that the guard matchup is what I'm looking forward to. Russell Westbrook versus Sias Jones. I like that. That's a good answer. Tomer, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you two more times this month. Oh, okay. Grizzly yeah. fans, thank you. this one is very late if you're watching from Memphis. So make sure you stay up, grab a coffee. This one tips off at 9 p.m. We'll see you there.